At the beginning of this convention, there was a, a, a joke made about the importance of timetables and adding them to a game. And it kind of sounds a little bit strange, but uh, could you explain a little bit why that is an important feature for the, the fan base of Cities in Motion? Of course, when you think about uh, traveling and uh, setting up timetables, it really just gives you the power to control the fleet in a whole new different way than what we didn't have in the in the uh, Cities Motion 1. But now you can actually just decide like when do the buses go and really cater better to the needs of the citizens. It's uh, perhaps the wrong way to go about it. We sh maybe we should explain a little bit what Cities Motion is first. It's, it's a transport simulation game, but I have to say that this second game looks a lot different than the first one because the premise is, is completely different. Yeah, we basically just uh, brought the game to the modern time and uh, it's, uh, I have to say, we uh, changed technology behind the game. So it's, it's looking uh, uh, good, <laughs> I have to say myself, you know. And uh, it just, uh, it's all about just the co uh, community feedback, you know, what, what our fans want and we just try and uh, bring it to them. Mm. This feels much more like a, like a sandbox game and a game where you sort of set your own experience in a sense, rather than sort of playing out an historical, uh, you know, uh, the evolution of a city in terms of transports over over a number of years. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the the funny thing is that we were asked to make like bigger goals so that people could have more freedom to play the game as they want. So of course we made that possible. <laughs> So, I mean, when you look at it, it's, it's almost like it plays a little bit like, like a sim city because you lay down the roads and then the, the city grows depending on where you lay down the roads. Um, how deep did you want to go into that? Do you, do you want to sort of, do you want to sort of give the players goals of, of growing the city or is that a little bit off to the side and something you didn't want to do? Uh, basically, we're still making a mass transit simulator. Mm. That's definitely the f focus and main point uh, about the build building the roads and kind of uh, having or giving the opportunity for the player to affect the city growth. I think it's important in the sense that they do go hand in hand also in real life uh, with the like transport and uh, city planning. And uh, it just uh, brings a bit new flavor to the game, but it's definitely the focus is still the mass transit. You didn't think about perhaps giving some, some presets of modern cities for, for those players who enjoyed uh, the sort of the authentic feel oh of, yeah, of course, playing yeah. around with a real city. Yeah, basically all the cities are fictional now because uh, we didn't want to be restricted with the realism in the sense that uh, when you have some uh, famous city, it's, it feels kind of funny to start playing around with, uh, with the road system they have and all <laughs> that. So it, uh, it just uh, all comes down to the, like, uh, what is suitable for this kind of game. And we felt that uh, fictional cities just give so much more uh, freedom and uh, I, I hope everybody will like it. Although I... I, I kind of get the sense that a lot of players would like to mess around with the, the sort of the, the layout of <laughs> cities that exist. <laughs> that, that could be true but luckily we still have the map editor so mm. you're free to create whatever city you want. So Will players be able to share that as well uh, with other players? Of course yeah there, there will be a, I, I believe a lot of again those community maps going so it, it's, it's going to be super amazing to see what people do with it. So in terms of, of compl complexity and choice What's what's on hand for the players in terms of how they can build up their their transport empire? Uh, so basically, uh, we have uh, f five different vehicle types. We have uh, the same ones we had in uh, Cities Motion One: buses, trams, and uh, metro trains. We added trolley buses. We have also water buses. So there's a lot of uh, different choices, and uh, definitely with the with the new new features, uh, we actually also added multiplayer, I have to mention it here because that's so cool. So you can start building the city with actually your f uh, or your network with your friend or then uh, fight against uh, others for those important passengers. So, so how, how does multiplayer w work? You have two different competing companies in the same city or? Yeah, exactly. I mean, in, in the competitive mode, it, it's uh, just you, you are um, trying to uh, increase the value of your company and have it better than everybody else and it, it really requires good and fast planning in the sense that you, you're the one who's gonna attract 
the the passengers and in the in the cor cooperative mode i think it's because the cities are now so much bigger than mm. they used to be it just uh, uh is, a, is a good way to kind of share the workload and maybe hands uh, like agree that somebody's working on the metro somebody's handling the bus lines or just sections of cities there's a lot of choices how you can you know uh take it on in terms of size uh because that is often a metric that people tend to like to hear yeah. how much bigger are the cities and how much more is there to them uh, so basically the cities are eight kilometers by eight kilometers and uh, it's uh, I think it's four times bigger than the biggest map size w what we had previously so it just uh, gives you a lot of uh, freedom uh, to to build absolutely big uh, metropolitans so mm. and that also makes it perhaps a little bit more uh, worthwhile to big a big a build uh, build a big uh, metro system for instance when you have those kind of distances yeah exactly so it, it I mean you can just uh, create those vast networks that mm. that we actually see in real life in the sense that uh, they they uh, we have in I even those like, sm smaller town areas that you can start connecting and uh, see how the city then starts to grow uh, affect the uh, based on your uh, choices so uh, it was playable here at Paradox Convention. So where are you at in development, and w will you be letting players in to, to test it early? Yeah, we're uh, actually running um, closed beta for uh, Cities Motion 2 now, and uh, we're uh, aiming the release for Q2 this year. So we're you know getting there, and uh, we just have to ask the Paradox people how we uh, do with the more of the testing. So. Right. So, um, a final thing. I heard you. You have a very sort of committed community. Would you like to 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 uh, because you expressed how their their feedback was what what sort of drove development on this title. Um, wh what is that relationship like, and and sort of how has that been for you guys to get the game that game out and sort of live with that community ever since? Well, basically, we just uh, love to... We, we are actually reading and uh, commenting on the Paradox Forum and uh, on Facebook as well. So it's just really amazing that every bit of information we uh, hand out, people are just really like always uh, uh, commenting on it and telling us like, okay, is that a good idea or a bad idea? And uh, from Cities Emotion 1, we just have so much like suggestions and feedback we got and we just really wanted to take that into consideration creating a sequel because it's... Uh, the, we are actually making the uh, game, of course, for our fans, and um, I think it's just a, it's a conversation between fans and developer, and I want to keep it that way, and I have to thank all our uh, fans because they are just really uh, passionate and uh, into the whole whole Cities in Motion universe, so it's a really cool thing. All right, and I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.